We commonly have data in Excel where records are piled on top of each other in one column. Unstacking means organizing your data in a list where each complete record is on a different row. By unstacking data, we are able to sort, filter, or create pivot tables to analyze our data. In this tutorial, I show you how to unstack records, and I'll be using four different methods. I will show you how to do that by using an index and match functions in a very creative method. If you have never created a code in VBA, I will guide you step by step on creating a simple code that can unstack your data. I will then unstack my records by using the magic of Power Query. And finally, the fastest, laziest, and most robust method by using dynamic arrays. My name is Na Oops. I forgot to unstack my name. I am Nabil Murad. Let's power on Excel. I can't wait to show you the mind-blowing techniques. Here is my Excel start file. You can download that file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. I have multiple records stacked on top of each other. Each record consists of 10 values. So I have the first name, the last name, the gender, the title, birthday, street, city, province, postal code, and phone number. Then I start again, I have the next record, then the next record, and so on. What I would like to do is to put each one of these records in a row. So in row number two in the destination range, I have the first record. In the next row, I have the second record and so on. Let's start fixing our records using different techniques. The function that I'll be using to fix my records is an index function. And the index function looks at an array and then requires a row number. So if I say I need to extract a value from row number one, that will be the first name. Row number two, that will be the last name, and so on. What I would like to do is in cell E2, I would like to extract the first name of the first record coming from cell B1. And then in cell F2, I would like to extract the last name coming from the second row of the source range. So let's see how we do this by using an index function. To unstack my records by using a function, I start selecting my destination cell, cell E2, and I'll be using an index function. So I type equal index, and then I hit tab. The index function requires a range, an array of values, and in this range, it requires a column number and their own number. And because I have one single column, so I don't need to provide a column number, I just need to provide their own number. So what's the range you want to fix? I'm selecting cell B1. I want to extend my selection, shift, control, down, arrow, and then I hit F4 to lock it and jump back. And then I hit comma to move to the next argument. For the row number, to extract the first value of the first record, I need to type number one. So if I hit one, and then I close the bracket and then hit enter, it's extracting the first name of the first record. But when I copy to the right, I need the second row, and then I need the third row, and then I need the fourth row, and so on. So I need to increment as I copy right and left. So I'm going to put my function in the edit mode, F2, and now I'm going to replace this hard-coded number one by a columns function. What does the columns function do? The columns function will create an incremental number, and it will increment as I drag to the right, providing the row number to the index function. So I type columns, and then I hit the tab key. I can select any single cell in my worksheet. I'm selecting cell C1. And then I hit shift colon to select the same exact cell. But note here for the columns function, I need to lock the first reference. So when I drag to the right, the first reference is locked. It doesn't change. The second one is changing. So it will be returning an incremental number. I put my blinking cursor in the first reference. And then I hit the F4 key three times. I'm locking just the letter C. And now I need to close the bracket for my index function. And when I hit enter, I would have extracted Sandra. Now let's copy to the right and check. And when I copy to the right, I'm extracting an entire record with the 10 values. Now can I copy this function down? Let me select the first value one more time. And then when I drag down, it's extracting the first name another time. 
And that's not what I want. Because here, I don't want to extract a value from row number one. I want to extract a value from row number 11. So how can I increment 1, 11, 21 as I go down? I need to add 10 to the second argument of the index function. How can I get this 10? And then when I increment down, I need 20, I need 30, and so on. Let's see how we do this by using a match function. So I'm going to put my function in the edit mode another time, so I hit F2. And now, before the closing bracket of the index function, I want to add 10. And when I copy down, I need to add 20 and so on. That's exactly the ordinal value of the phone number of the record above. So if I use a match function, I'm going to type a plus sign and then type match. And then I hit tab. What would you like to match? I would like to match the last value in the record above. And then I want to lock it to the column. So I hit the F4 key three times. And then I hit comma. What's your lookup array? My lookup array is the entire range of source values. Shift, control, down, arrow, and then F4 to lock it and jump back. I'm looking at an exact match. So I type comma. And then I type zero for an exact match and close the bracket for the match function. The match function is adding to the second argument. Right now, it's adding 10 because the phone number coming from the record above has the order 10 in the source list. Now, if I close the bracket, I'm extracting the last name. I can copy down and look at that. It's not extracting what I want because I don't have a value here. But if I copy to the right, it will be working just fine. Now I'm copying to the right and I was able to extract an entire record. Now let's copy down. And when I go beyond the total number of records, I'll be getting a reference error. How can I hide the reference error? That's very simple. I put my function one more time in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key. And then I click before the index function and I say, if all this index function is returning an error. So I type if error. And then what would you like to do if this index function is returning an error? I click to the very right of my index function, type a comma, and then type double quote, double quote, and then close the bracket. To populate my function, I hit control enter. My function is working just fine, and I was able to unstack the record by using a combination of functions, the index function, the columns function, and the match function. All of them were put in an if error function. I start my code by declaring four variables. Think of a variable as a container, storing things that change every time I run the instructions. The first variable stores the number of cells in the range to be fixed. I named it my records. The second variable stores the row number of the destination where I want to paste. I named it paste cell. The third variable is storing an incremental number. I named it loop counter. The three are numbers, so they are of the integer data type variables. The last variable stores the reference to the range of one complete record we want to fix, one record at a time. It's an object variable, and I named it fix range. Let's understand the concept prior to writing the code in Excel Visual Basic Editor. I start my subroutine by declaring the four variables. I then assign a value to my records, the total number of cells in the column to fix. I start looping over instructions with a pattern, step 10, which means 1, 11, 21, 31, and so on, which is the first value in each record. I specify and copy the first record. This will change to the next record with every loop. Identify the destination cell to paste. This one also changes with every loop. I paste and transpose the copied record. Then I repeat for the next record, and so on. To run the code a second time, I clear the destination range. The line of code for pasting maps to the Paste Special dialog box in Excel. I select the destination and transpose the record. Let's now create our code in Excel.
To unstack my records by creating a code in VBA, I have to switch to the Visual Basic Editor, and I do that by hitting Alt F11. When I hit Alt F11, I'm in the Visual Basic Editor, and I would like to create a module where I'll be writing my code. To insert a module, I click on the Insert menu and select Module. Alternatively, I use the shortcut Alt IM. Here is my module and I start creating my code by typing the keyword SAP. So I'm going to name my module Fix Records. So I type SAP and then I type Fix Records. I'm not allowed to have spaces in the name of a subroutine and when I hit enter, SAP will turn blue and opening and the closing bracket will be added and the keyword end SAP will be added as well. Between the SAP and end SAP, I start creating my code. I start my code by declaring four variables. Think of a variable as a container that stores a value that changes every time we run the code. To declare a variable, we use the keyword dim, and a variable can be a data type variable or an object variable. So I'm declaring four variables. I type dim. My records as integer. What are my records? That's the total number of values in the entire column to fix. And then I'm declaring fix range as a range, and this is the range that stores one single record. And then dim paste cell as integer. Paste cell, that's the destination cell where I'll be pasting each record one at a time. So it changes every time I run the code. And then loop counter, that's simply an integer number that generates an incremental value. The next thing I would like to do is to assign a value to my records. So my records, if I want to go to Excel, I click on this little Excel icon to the left side of the toolbar and it takes me back to Excel. I would like to count all the cells in column B starting from B1 up to the end. So I'll be creating a very simple line of code that stores the number of cells in the variable called my records. If later on you add more records, then this value will change as well. So I type my records equal range b1 comma range b1 dot end excel down. That's the equivalent of selecting cell b1 in excel and hitting control down arrow. What would you like to do with this range? I type dot count because the visual basic editor is an object-oriented language. So I mention an object, then we mention what we want to do with that object. So with this range from B1 to the end of the range, I would like to count. This will return a number, and that's why my records is an integer data type. And then I would like to start selecting cell B1, so I type range B1.select. I will then start looping over the instructions. Looping simply means I'll be repeating the same instructions for a certain number of times. And to do this, I'm using the keyword for next. So I'll be typing for loop counter equals one. I want to start counting from number one to all the values that I have, which I'm storing in the variable named my records. Would you like to move one by one? I want to move from the first value of the first record to the first value of the second record. I want to go from 1 to 11 to 21 to 31. So I'm going to type step 10. And then I'm closing the 4 by typing next loop counter. Between the 4 and next, I start creating my instructions that will be repeated. Inside the loop, I would like to assign a value to the fixed range which is one record at a time. I use the keyword set because it's a range. It's an object variable. So I type set fix range to be equal range from B1 to B10. The second time I want the range from B11 to B20. The third time I want the range from B21 to B30 and so on. So I'm using the keyword range and then I'm using cells loop counter comma 2. The first time loop counter is 1, that means from B1. 2 corresponds to the column and loop counter corresponds to the row. So loop counter is 1, that means this is cell B1 
And then I want to offset nine comma zero and I'm closing the bracket, which means I'm moving nine rows down, which will be cell B10, that will be an entire record. The second time when I loop over instructions, loop counter gets the second value. The second value, step 10, will be 11. That means I'm assigning to the fixed range from B11 to B20. Now we need to copy that range because the range is named fixed range. Then I type fixed range dot copy. Where am I going to paste? I didn't yet assign a value to the paste cell. So I'm going to assign a value right now inside the loop. Anything you do inside the loop, that means it changes in value every time you run the code. Now I would like to assign a value to the paste cell. The paste cell is the destination cell where I'll be pasting. This one changes every time I run the code. So if I go to Excel, the first time I'll be pasting in E2, the second time I'll be pasting in E3. So I'm going to assign this value by counting from the last row moving up as if I'm selecting the last cell in column E, and then I'm hitting control up arrow. That will take me to cell E1. I add one, that will be E2. And every time I run the code, it will be incrementing by one. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor Alt F11. And now paste cell equals active sheet dot cells rows dot count comma five. What does it mean? Rows dot count that returns the total number of rows. And it's returning it inside the cells keyword. Cells means it needs a row number and a column number. So the row number will be the last row. And the column number is 5, which corresponds to column E. That means I'm starting from the last cell in column E. And then I hit end Excel up, which is the equivalent of hitting control up arrow. And I want to extract the row number, so I type dot row. Do you want to paste in this row? No, I want to paste in the row below it, in the first empty row in column E. So I'm adding one. Now I'm ready to paste. So where are you going to paste? I'm going to paste in cells. I'll grab the number from the variable paste cell. That will correspond to the row number where I want to paste. And I want to paste in column E. So I type 5 and then I type dot paste special. Then I type a space after paste special. And the paste special has extra parameters. These parameters map perfectly to the paste special dialog box in Excel. So it asks me four questions. For the paste, I want to paste all. So I type paste colon equal Excel paste all. For the operation, Excel none, because I don't want to perform any calculation. And then for the skip blanks, that's set to false, as if I'm deselecting this box. And then for the transpose, that is set to true, as if I'm checking this box in the paste special dialog box. The final thing I would like to do outside the loop, I would like to stop at a known cell. So I'll be selecting, let's say, cell E2. So I'll type range, double quote, E2, double quote, close bracket, dot select. Now let's improve the appearance of this code by indenting some lines. So I'm going to select these two lines. And then I hit the tab. And then I'll be selecting all the loop. And then I hit the tab. I want to select all the instructions inside the loop. And then I want to tab them. Now I'm creating kind of indentation that makes it easier for me to read the code. If you want to run this code another time, then assuming that you extracted the records when running the code the first time and you added more records, then before running the code, you need to clear this area. So I'm going to clear it. I have 10 columns to the right and I don't want to count the number of rows down. I'll put a big number, let's say 200, and I'll be writing the final line of instructions. After the declaration, I type range E2 dot resize, which means extend 200 rows down and 10 columns to the right and clear contents. And this is my code. I would like to test it and I want to show you how to test it line by line. So I'm going to restore down my Visual Basic Editor. So I just resized my Visual Basic Editor. I put my blinking cursor inside the code and I start running the code line by line by hitting F8. So the first line of code range E2 dot resize 200 comma 10 clear contents will have no effect right now because I don't have any contents. 
And the second one, my records, when I run it this time, if I hover over my records, look at the screen tip, it says zero, but when I run this line by hitting another F8, now it stored the total number of values in column B. I want to select a known cell, range B1.select, so when I hit F8, it goes to cell B1. Now I'll start looping over the instructions, so I hit F8, set the fixed range, the fixed range will be the first tracker, and then it will copy it. You will see the dancing ants when I hit F8 around the first tracker. Now, what would you like to do? I would like to paste it, but we don't know the destination cell, so if I hover over paste cell, it has a value of 0, but if I hit F8, now it has a value of 2, because this is the row number where I would like to paste. I can move my Visual Basic Editor a little bit, now I'm going to paste and transpose, so when I hit F8, I would have pasted the first tracker. Look at the loop right now. When I hit F8 another time, it will be repeating the same instructions. Loop counter the first time had a value of 1. Now it has a value of 11. As if I'm copying the range, 11, 2, which is B11, down to B20. So if I run the instructions by hitting F8, I'm copying the next tracker. Look at the dancing ants around the next tracker. Then I hit F8 twice to paste the second record. I want to run the code in its entirety, so I click on the Run button on the standard toolbar. So when I click on the Run button, I would have copied all the records. Now let's test it another time, but this time I'll be adding more records. So we need to test the first line that deletes the previous values and then unstacks the record another time. So I'll go back to Excel, and in Excel I have to the right two more records. I'm going to copy the two extra records in column R, Control C to copy, go to the bottom of the list and paste, Control V. Now when I look at the records, I should have two more records after Courtney. Let's run the code another time. Alt F11 to bring the code. And now I'll be running the first line by hitting F8, just to show you that it will delete the previous values. F8, F8. Look at this line. If I resize my window, when I hit F8, now it's clearing everything. Now I'm going to run the code by hitting the run button or the F5 key. Now it's extracting all the records, and I have two extra records, and I'm able to unstack my records by using a simple VBA code. We know that whenever we have a code in VBA, then we cannot save our Excel file in the regular .xlsx format. You need to save your file as a macro-enabled Excel file .xlsm. Now I would like to unstack my records by using Power Query. I start by selecting a single value in the record that I would like to fix, and then I hit Control T. T stands for table, because I want to convert it into a table, and then when I hit OK, my original records have been converted to a table. I can rename the column my records, and then I can rename the table piled because the records are on top of each other. And now I'm going to take this table to Power Query. To do this, I go to the Data tab of the ribbon, and to the left side of the Data tab, in the Get and Transform Data, I click on From Table. You might have a different appearance if you are using Office 2013 or Office 2016, but you will find it anyway on the data tab in the get and transform data i click on from table i'm using office 365. so when i click on from table here is my query editor and the first thing i would like to do in the query editor i'm going to rename my query so i typed unstack records it changes the data type and this is a totally useless step because I have all data type in one single column, so I don't want it for now. I'm going to take care of that later. So I click on the little deletion icon to the left side of the second step in the applied steps, and it's gone. Now what I would like to do is to create a column of incremental number. We call it an index column. I do that by clicking on Add Column, and then I want to create an index column that starts counting from zero. So when I select that, 
I have a column of incremental number. Each record consists of 10 values. I would like to recreate another column of incremental number that starts the first value at 0 and the last value for each record at 10, so as if I'm dividing the index column by 10 and I want the remainder. I do that by clicking on the Add Column tab and then click on the down arrow for Standard and I'm going to select Modulo, which means the remainder. So if I click on Modulo here, it opens this dialog box. I would like to divide by 10 and get the remainder. So when I hit OK, look what happens. A new column has been created. It starts each record at 0 and it ends at 9 and the next record 0 and ends at 9 because each record has 10 values. My next step, which will start fixing everything and unstacking my records, is to pivot the Modulo column. And to do this, I go to the Transform tab, and on the Transform tab, I say, I want to pivot column. So what this dialog box is doing is that it will be creating a column 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9 for each one of the records in the My Records. So here in the first box, I need My Records, but I don't want to count, so I click on Advanced Option and say, well, I don't want to aggregate, so I select Don't Aggregate, and then I hit OK. Now look at that. In the zero column, I have the first name, and then I have a set of null, and then at position 10, I have Armando, the first name of the next record, and so on. What I would like to do is to bring the last name to the top row, and then I would like to bring the gender, female, to the top row, and so on, and that's very easy. I'm going to select this column having the last name, I press shift and click on the last column and then I would like to fill the values up. I do that by clicking on the transform tab and then click on the down arrow for fill and select fill up. And that would have fixed everything. Now what I would like to do in order to get my list of unstacked records is to filter out the nulls from the first name column and to do this, I click on the down arrow for the first name column and then take the check away from null. When I hit OK, I would have fixed all the records. Now we need to do some house cleaning. I'm going to select the index column, right click and remove. We don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to rename all these columns. So I'll rename the first one, first name, last name, gender, title, date of birth, address, city, province, postal code, and phone. Now I renamed all the columns. What remains is to check the data type. All of them are text with the exception of the date of birth. So I'm going to do that by selecting the leftmost column and then press shift and click on the rightmost. I'm going to convert all of them to text. So I right click and select change type and select text from the flyout menu. All of them are text with the exception of the date of birth. So I click on the little icon to the left side of the date of birth. And from here, I'll be selecting a date. It will ask me to reconfirm that I'm replacing the text. Yes, I want to replace and I'm done. I was able to fix all the records and I was able to unstack my data. Let's send it back to Excel. I do that by clicking on the Home tab, click on the down arrow for Close and Load, and select Close and Load 2. Where would you like to load it? So I select Existing Worksheet, put my blinking cursor in this box, and then select Cell. I want to paste it in Cell E1, and when I hit OK, I would have unstacked all my records. Now let's test adding more records, so if I navigate a little bit to the right, I have two more records that I'm going to copy and paste at the end of my table. Control C to copy, and then I want to paste. So I click in the first empty cell under my table and paste. Now if I would like to unstack these records, all what I need to do to rerun all the steps saved inside the query is to go to the data tab and click on refresh all, and here are the new records. <laughs> Finally, I would like to unstack my records by using the magical and easiest and laziest technique by using dynamic arrays. I'll be using one of the dynamic arrays functions that were recently introduced. They are only available in Office 365 
with Office Insider, but they will soon become available to everyone. In order to use the dynamic arrays, I'm going to prepare for that by converting my source list of records arranged or piled up in one single column. I'm going to convert it to a table by using the shortcut Control T and then I hit enter. I converted my list into a table. I can name it anything like source. And now I would like to count how many records I have. I know that each record consists of 10 values. So here is the first record starting with the first name and ending with the phone number. It consists of 10 and each record consists of 10. I want to count how many records I have. So I select cell D2 and I type equal count A and then I hit tab. I select the first value and then shift control down arrow F4 to lock it and jump back. And when I close the bracket and that will be counting how many non blanks do I have, but I don't want the number of values. I want the number of records and because each record consists of 10 values. So I'm going to put it in the edit mode F2 and I'll be typing a forward slash and divide by 10. That gives me the total number of records I have right now. Now I'm selecting cell F2. And I want to fix my records by using a combination of index and the sequence function. So let's see how we do this. So I type equal index and then I hit tab. The indexes ask me about the array of values that I want to fix. So I select the first value starting from cell B2, shift control down arrow and then F4 to lock it and jump back. I can move this tool tip a little bit and then I hit comma. Now the index function requires two more arguments. It asks me how many rows and how many columns. What I would like to do is to extract each record in a row. And since I have eight records, then I need eight rows, one for each record. And because each record consists of 10 values, then I need 10 columns. And this is what the sequence function will be doing. So if I type sequence, and then I hit the tab key. It requires a row number and a column number. So if I select the number of rows from D2, the result of my count function divided by 10, and then I hit comma, how many columns do you want? Then I want to spread my single column into 10 columns, and then I close the bracket for the sequence, and I close the bracket for the index function. All the magic will happen right now. When I hit enter, look at that, I was able to extract and fix and unstack all the records with one single function. I didn't have to copy. I didn't have to transpose. I didn't have to paste. I didn't have to worry about relative and absolute cell reference because it spills to the entire range. If I select the cell in which I created my function cell F2, look at the formula bar, my formula appears in black. But if I click on any other cell, it appears grayed out because I didn't copy it manually. It just spills to the adjacent columns and to the adjacent rows. If you even try to select any single value other than cell F2 and you try to hit the delete key, you can't do that, you cannot delete. The real magic is when you add more records to the source list. And this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to select these two extra records available in column S, and then I'm going to copy them. And I want to add them to the bottom of the source list. So I jump down to the bottom of the source list, and then I paste the two records. Now, if I go up at the top, automatically without having even to refresh, like in case of Power Query, I have all the records. In a more advanced scenario, if you don't want to create the function in cell D2, you can simply nest it inside the sequence function. I showed you four methods for unstacking records. We learned how to do that by using functions, by using a VBA code by using Power Query, and by using dynamic arrays. Let me know in a comment here below which method you prefer. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumb up, and consider subscribing to this channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.